Hi, I'm Gina. I own and operate from the ground up floral. So I've been in the wedding and event business for quite a while. I got started back in 2008 when I decided to do my own wedding. And since then I've gone on to multiple forms of education, joining national ranking educational committees and um, even got my European masters. But with that being said, I still needed something to manage my business and my clients and give them the best client experience possible. So what did I do? I went out and I found many different types of software. There are so many options to choose from, but the reason that I chose Depsado is mainly um, the customization and you know if Dubsado can work for multiple different kinds of businesses it can work for anything from a lawyer to somebody like me who's extremely on the creative end there's just so many ways to make your brand shine with Dubsado that's why i really appreciated what they have done with their software not only is Dubsado super customizable for your brand it also automates things Running a full-time business along with a family and multiple other commitments, my time is very limited and I want my clients to still have that very catered feel to their experience. I don't want them to ever feel like they can't get what they need from me or that I haven't, you know, touched base with them in a while. So Dubsado really helps me keep on track while managing multiple clients and multiple weddings and events. It's basically my sanity saver. <laughs> so there are four things that I absolutely love and could not live without, and Dubsado nails those. First of all, the automation. Automation is key, especially nowadays. People need instant results, quick proposals, a fast turnaround, and the capacity to do this all online, which Dubsado does. Scheduling consultations, integrating their consultations with Google Meet, and moving through workflows seamlessly is how I manage my time wisely. <laughs> and the second one is the customer experience and the capacity that you get with Dubsado to brand your business while using their software. I know I've tried other CRMs where the client gets a little confused as to who they're talking to because the software still has their branding on many things that get sent out. So I really appreciate the fact that you can completely brand everything down to the colors, the styles of fonts, um, those are all completely customizable and there is no Dubsado branding on anything you send out. It is your own. Number three, Dubsado gives you the power to lean into learning about your client. Nowadays, experience is everything for your client. Having a good experience with you gets you further, gets you referrals, and gets you repeat customers. Not so much in the wedding and event industry, but you know there are further things in their life that are going to need florals that you'll be the one they come to for. Um, I can't tell you how many brides I've had that are like, hey, guess what? It's time for a baby shower. Or, you know, couples are having anniversaries, um, major life events, and being a florist, we get to be part of all of that. So it's very exciting, and those can also be done and managed in Dubsado. And number four, keeping track of everything. Oh my goodness. If you are anything like me, I used to be the type that had post-it notes everywhere. Um, reminders, little pieces of paper that it just aren't necessary anymore. You can do all of that with Dovsato. I get a little extra help and push things through to Trello, so that keeps me on task anywhere I go. So let's look at where the automation starts. Um, this is my website, and if we go up here to check your date, here we have this form that I embedded. But here's the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out as if I were a client.
And I'm gonna use my personal email. And we're gonna go with email. And we're gonna select the date. We'll just call it uh, January 16th, sounds great. And this is really awesome. Um, you can track where your clients are coming in from um, on your website. If you have, you know, if you have tracking on this, you can put it in a lot of other places within Dubsada too, but it's really nice to know where people are coming from. So if this was a referral from another planner or a photographer or you know, anybody that like frequently refers you, you could, um, they could fill this out. Um, if a client referred them um, or if a vendor referred them or, you know, if they just kind of happen to stumble upon your website through searching um, or, you know, any of these other ways that we might be found. It's really good because Dubsado will track that for you and um, then you know where to focus your advertising in the future. So it's all kind of fun. I'm gonna just put, let's say it was personal website. Okay, so there we go. That's all done and sent. So now um, it'll automatically say thank you. And now what's gonna happen is I'm going to get an email. So this is my Dubsado area where they would get that canned email. This is the welcome email, which I typed out ahead of time. And this is what they're going to be receiving when they fill out that intake form, the intake form on my website. So um, it will autofill with these brackets. So it'll put the first name of the client here. I like to say congratulations. Here's a floral planning worksheet, which I made in Canva. And here's my link to the calendars, um, which we'll go over in a minute. Dubsado is really awesome with their calendars. And then um, I write down that they can get a proposal started, which I'm still working on, and I'll walk through that as well really quick. And um, a blog roundup where they can see our frequently asked questions. So here is the email that goes out to everybody that fills out the contact form on my website, which we just saw. I wanna go over this right here. Um, I am always, customizing Dubsado and playing with something in here. And you know, it, it's, it's really fun to see what this software is capable of. It's super robust. And um, so what I have kind of come up with is a way that um, you can get somebody a quote without having to basically, you know, get on a console with them. Um, I do have a lot of clients that are just kind of price shopping um, or seeing what fits into their budget. And I don't mind providing that for people if that's how they feel comfortable getting started because a lot of people don't understand the pricing within the floral industry as um, you know, general public. So it's kind of nice to have that as a baseline. But let's go ahead and I'll show you in my templates what I have for that. So what I've kind of done, I used um, the Creative Template Shop and um, I have a link for them. They are really amazing. They do a lot of Dubsado templates that you can purchase and basically it's drag and drop. Um, here's one. This isn't the right one. Let's go back. So from the ground up floral wedding proposal is the one I wanted. And this is all basically drag and drop that I created these images in Canva and it'll auto populate the client's name and email and the date of the quote. And I let this be valid for about two weeks so they can kind of get, um, get an idea if it's what they want to move forward with. And like I said, this is something they can fill out on their own. I don't have to hold their hand for this at all. Um, 
the normal direction of my workflow is, you know, they inquire, they schedule a consult, I get off the consult with their design ideas and make a proposal. It takes forever. It's very time consuming. And this is part of the process that I don't get paid for. So this to me up front gives them the power, gives them the ball in their court. They can kind of go through and choose what they want to. Um, just some kind of average pricing within the realm of bouquets. Um, you know, crowns, anything that they would want to add in, they can do. And what it'll do once this is, they can go through and select their items. What it will do is it will get them a total. So this isn't quite finished yet, but ideally what's going to happen is when a client comes through and picks the items, it will auto generate an invoice where they can see their total. And from there, it will also create a project in Dubsado for me where I could reach out and schedule a phone call or anything they wanted to go over. We could then move forward with their creative consultation and I'll have a lot more info and a lot more to work with. Editing these proposals and making these are very easy. They make it so, so simple to just choose you can upload images like i had showed you this is an image piece so what i would do is come in here click it if i need to edit it or fill out put to basically add a picture you could um i have a lot of things uploaded in here already but you can easily upload your image um upload all and then you just apply it and then this will show up here as your image. So I made these images in Canva. And coming down here, um, these are all text boxes, so you can easily edit these. You can choose your fonts, all the font selection items here. And then you can write whatever you'd like. You can align it however you want. Easily customizable there. Um, this one is also a image, so I made that in Canva. And then here, this is also an image. It's just this nice little separator bar that I made in Canva as well. And here's a cool thing. You can create this box here. So this box is one piece. This is a column box. So you can choose how many things are in your column and you can choose to show the title or not. I chose not to, but here we have four columns. So you can fit four things here. This could either be an image. Um, it's so customizable. Like guys, this could be an image next to this, or you could have this just all be packages. Um, and within here, uh, it will automatically grab your packages and we can go over where the packages are. I've gone through and created basically everything you would think of that could go out with a wedding and I put it in as a package so I can easily get to it when I'm creating invoices and quotes. Um, because that's how I like to do my proposals is um, it's not exactly like a package deal, but I treat each item within the wedding as a package in Dubsado so I can easily pull it up and invoice it. So here's um, how you could edit that. I have, see, I have a lot of items here. And this is all based on my pricing, so don't, I mean, don't take the pricing to heart, but um, I've also done a lot of um, workshops this way as well. I'll show you those. They're kind of a cool little form. Um, so that's really easy and painless. You don't have to do a whole lot there. It, it, once you get the packages done, um, you know, it is a little work on the back end to set up, but it's so worth it. It saves me so much time. Um, so they can easily come in here and pick the amount of things they need, you know, that could be, um, the quantity. And then what, like I said, what is going to happen is it will, um, generate an invoice once they've filled everything out. And down here, I actually added in, you know, if they haven't already scheduled their consultation with me, we, we need to, to chat so that we can discuss what they've chosen. 
and go over like colors and style and design because all of the things they have chosen are just items and they don't include any specific specificity yet, um, which is how I run, which is how this works for me because each wedding is so different and so unique. It's very hard to provide customized quotes for each person. So this is how I make it as basic as possible and then add the creativity after I've spoken with them. So let's go back into our forms here and I wanna just show you this workshop that I came up with. Um, let's see, we did the punculant workshop. This one's really fun. So what I did is I created all of these images again in Canva and I created a virtual design class and it's super easy for them to sign up. I put the steps here for them. So step one, um, you know, I record the video and then I deliver all of the ingredients that they need to make the design and they can design at home. So basically this is telling them that what they need to do is fill out this form they can choose, you know, one pumpkin with succulents, or they can add on a mini pumpkin, um, and they can choose multiple if they would like to. And then immediately this will take them, once they fill out the form here and select their delivery date, this will take them immediately to their invoice. Okay, so here is a client portal that I made for myself. I went through to test. And the awesome thing about this is you can see everything. This is how I manage my clients and their workflow. You can see this was the, the workshop and it will show them the invoice. Um, so there's the hat. Uh, basically went through this as myself and gave myself a discount just so I can make it look nice and work correctly. So you can see that. And then the document, this was the proposal for it. And so that was all filled out. And um, there's also the emails. So this is all set up here. Um, I tested an appointment and it works just fine. And this is where the invoice comes through. You could also do things like really fun, like uh, upload um, any um, forms, which I'll show you. I also do questionnaires for my clients in here as well. So this is just kind of what my client portal looks like. It's really nice and pretty. So let's run through what we have on the back end. This is what it looks like for me. Um, the pretty version, of course, goes out to the client as their client portal. Uh, so when you first come in, when you create a project in Dubsado, this is what you're going to see. You're going to be able to customize this. Um, you can change the name, date, you can add a contract. Um, you can you can tag them by category within your business. If you do multiple things, it's nice to have tags so you can keep track of what you do. And then in project status, you can create a workflow where they move through these statuses. So see the welcome email and then follow up and then proposal and complete. And um, no status is kind of where I refer to as my ghost, um, my ghost couples. So um, you can edit all of this info here. Sometimes it will open. So you could edit all of this. This is, you know, my business info, but there you go. You could do all of that here. And then the portal, you want to make sure this is active to send to your client. And you would send this via email. Um, and that's how they would get into the portal. You can add the project location with the address, um, custom mapped project, custom mapped project fields. Um, you can edit that if you need to. And then the referral source, we kind of went over that earlier. Um, you can add that in yourself if they don't tell you. 
and team members. You you can have team members in Dipsado, so that's always nice. Moving on to the the emails. This is how the client would get to their portal. You would definitely want to email them their their portal, and you can have canned emails. I do have a few canned emails. So this is a canned email that I, it just auto populates the name of course. And here we go. You can click that and it will take the client to their portal. If I click on this, it will just take me back to signing in and um, because you can't view it as the creator that this will send. And you could also schedule this send, um, which is nice for us night owls. You can always schedule it to send early in the morning and it's it's never failed. I've never had a failed email. That's the communications inbox with email and then the invoices. This is where I do my line items for my wedding proposals. It's very simple, very easy. You go down the line, you add things from your package list. So I could basically just add any of these Keep going down the list and it'll calculate them down at the bottom for me. And you can change the tax. You can change the um, description. You can even change what it's called if you need to edit it a little bit. Um, this is very nice. It just keeps it all nice and neat. And you can add payment schedules. So you can do a full payment, recurring, half. Um, I like to do this 30, 35, 35, 35, and 30. Uh, it's just very nice to split it up for the client. Um, the first payment also being like my retainer fee for the date is always good. And you know what? It will remind them for me. <laughs> I don't have to do any of this anymore, um, which is so great. I don't have to remember. So also on the back end, I can add any of these forms that I would like to. So this was the pumpkin proposal. Um, if I was doing a bridal client, I could easily put in, um, so my mood boards, we can go over that. Let's do that. Uh, the mood board is one that I've created again with the creative template shop, but this is what I do for each client. Um, I create a very nice detailed mood board. These pictures. I actually will replace this picture with one that I make custom for each client and I make those in Canva. So this picture is just a placeholder. And um, so it turns out to be a really nice, um, very nice and inspired looking um, proposal for the mood board basically. And what they can do here is they can go through and tell me if they like it or they don't, which is just a game changer. I, this saves me so much headache, you guys. I, I can't even tell you if, if there's something on here that they don't like, they can just write it right here. I don't have to go back and forth with them trying to figure out if they, you know, don't like one certain flower or if they do, um, or if they're sort of, if I'm sort of missing the mark on their, um, aesthetic, I can go over that right here. And I do it for each part of the, the wedding, ceremony, reception, and then at the end, um, they can tell me, of course, on each section if they like it or if they don't. And um, so that can be added to the portal for them to fill out when they're ready to fill that out. So you could just click here and it will add it to the portal. Um, I also like to do, um, da, 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 da. Um, I have an elopement package. This is a really great one for um, brides that are just looking for boutonnieres, etc. I made this up as an actual package. So some basic, you know, basic ideas of what an elopement is some, you know, really great pictures. They can basically tell me what they need out of this package and select this. And um, we can customize it from there. They can do any add-ons they want to do. Uh, and then they fill out the form here. 
And then, then the next steps would be for them to set up their creative consultation. And um, what this will automatically do is send them that link so they can schedule based on their time frame. And I could easily add that to the portal. Um, this is also one of those forms that I made public. So this is available right off of my website. They can, um, this isn't something that I would normally put inside somebody's portal. Um, it would kind of be something they can find on their own and then fill it out and go from there. Um, another one I like to add. So getting to know you is what I like to put in here for all of my clients. This is a really great one because what it does is it basically gathers their information, gathers their social media, some really nice fun facts. I make sure to get their post wedding address so that, you know, I can send out that nice thank you gift, that nice thank you note. Um, you know, a little bit of details on how they met, um, you know, why they chose what they chose things like that. Um, this also is kind of like my secret weapon for when I want to go back and put the wedding up on my blog. I have all of the information stored in here and it's part of my, um, my workflow. So as a florist, I know you're kind of wondering exactly how I make this work for my clients. And I'm going to walk you through a proposal that I've done recently and customize fully for my um, my couple. So let's check it out. Here's the mood board that I sent them. So let's see here. So you can see what I've done here. I've gone through in Canva. This is super easy. I can do this within a matter of minutes because I have all of these templated in Canva already. All I have to do is switch out the colors and, you know, the venue pictures. Um, and I change the name and dates. But here's a picture of another, you know, their foliage and florals that I'm proposing. I like to do my proposals based on more of color rather than specific flowers. I always let them know that these are things that... Um, you know, I may or may not be able to get, but I will definitely try to substitute for very similar items. So then we move on to the wedding party. I do some bouquet shots for the bride. Um, these are all pulled up on Pinterest and just be aware that they are other people's photography as well as mine. I do not use these to distribute. These are only for inspiration only. Um, none of this is going to be recreated exactly, nor am I using this for commercials. So, um, keep that in mind when you're creating mood boards. I move on to the ceremony reception, and then I have a number of rentals available with my company. So I do like to include pictures of things that might be a possibility for them to rent, which I have a, um, questionnaire as well that I've made. Um, I'll show you that in one second, but she, you know, they're, they're more than welcome to kind of like pick and choose. If this isn't quite what they were envisioning, um, they can let me know. And so, so that is still not completed yet. It has been viewed, which is nice. They, um, Devsato does have the ability to show you if things have been viewed and when they were viewed. So um, let's check out the rental items now. So this is the rental items. Um, and it's a questionnaire that I've built out based on what I have available within my company for them to rent. Uh, they can kind of go through and let me know by name, which one is kind of on their list of things that they like. And um, this is kind of the short and sweet version. I didn't include a whole lot because they have an archway at the venue. Um, but I have a lot more things available in here. Uh, but I just kind of chose to make this one short and sweet. So it's only a few categories. 
And um, yeah, they can let me know what they want on here. And once they finish this sheet, I will have that and I can add and I can add that to their invoice um, as far as what they've chosen for the rentals. So I know what to pull when I'm doing my orders. Here's what the scheduler looks like behind the scenes. And what it does is it will pull your availability from your calendar as well. So you can link your calendar in the settings over here. You can link um, your Google Calendar, um, which is the one I've, I've chosen to use. It works with, I think it works with many different calendars, but I have chosen to use my, my Google because Google is the one I use. And um, what it will do is if I have any time marked out on my own calendar, um, as far as like events in my daily life or um, other weddings or events or things that are happening, it will give me the option to mark myself as busy on the Google calendar and Dubsado will pull that. And people will not be able, people will not be able to make appointments when um, Google calendar is showing you busy. So that's always really nice. And you can customize these. You can name your appointments. And I have quite a few, as you can see. Um, I also use this for podcasting interviews with my um, teaching and um, floral industry uh, education. I, I interview a lot of people using this because it's great because you can link that Google Meet right up to it. Um, but here you can see I have a few different um, consultation forms and uh, locations available. And what I did is I grouped these into, um, I've taken them and I've made different locations. <laughs> Sorry, I made different locations. So this is another location. These are coffee shop locations, possibly wine consultations. And um, I put them all into different groups. So we have a wine consultation location group. They can choose from either of these three locations if they're more into an evening appointment with wine um, or coffee consultation groups. I have four different coffee shops that are pretty, um, you know, pretty awesome to meet at. And then um, let's see, I also have um, one appointment scheduler for the online or phone consultation because I don't need more than one for that. But these are really great. If you open up, let's open up the coffee shop one. And you can see you can you can either edit, um, delete or make a copy of it. Um, so here we go. These are the appointment schedulers that I've had made up ahead of time. So back in the listed items, I created all of these and they have different um, stipulations on them. These ones are mainly just location-based stipulations. You could change them according to times you're available and things like that. And then you can customize these with using a canned email. I don't specifically use it that way. What I do is I have put it in the email that is my welcome email and um, that's, that's where they're seeing. So I usually will take the link for this scheduler, which is available out here. Um, but if you wanted to send somebody these locations, you could easily put a, you could easily make a canned email that would send these for them. Um, but here's how you get the link for it. You just click the share button. Um, you can embed this or this could be the direct link. So that's how I like to utilize the scheduler. Um, I also use it for my courses and like I said, my podcasting. So I have two different, um, two different schedulers for um, students and one for podcasting. And let me show you the podcasting template really quick that I made. I think this is really fun. So it's podcasting time. And what they can do is they'll go in and fill this out and I'll get um, all the info from them that I need to um, start their podcast episode uh, behind the scenes. And then um, 
the email that will go out once they've completed this will have the scheduler link in it as well. So we can get that time and date scheduled for that. So back to the scheduler. And so, you know, you can customize this as much as you want to within the scheduler. Um, you can make your appointment times different. You can, the advanced, you can prevent booking 70, you know, like I just kind of have this set up to give me a buffer. I have a buffer of about an hour between my appointments because I don't like to do appointments back to back. Um, you can also require, I mean, there's just so many options. You can require a deposit to secure this booking. Um, you can toggle this on to set them a, you know, a reminder so that they don't forget their appointment. Um, you can change the weekly view to a monthly view for them. There's just, see, it's just so crazy customizable, which is my, I just, I think it's the best. And um, yeah, and the fact that it pulls in your Zoom link or your Google Meet, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. You just check that box and it will show right, right on there. Uh, and it is, it, also will send you an appointment reminder um, via um, so what it'll do what what Google does when it creates the video conferencing meet room you can RSVP and um, I always think that's great because it like it'll pop up on my calendar um, I have my my notifications set to remind me of meetings within the hour so it's always nice to get that little reminder that it's like oh yeah I have a meeting in an hour um, and uh, it's really helpful. So let's just kind of go over roughly what Dubsado looks like when you open up your dashboard. It's pretty nice. You have your financial goals, open invoices, revenue. Um, you get, you know, updates if you have anything here that you need to go through and check on. Your calendar, it will pull your calendar. This literally, mine, this is a sample version, but my actual Dubsado will pull in from Google so I can see all of my events that are going on in Google as well as what's happening here. And then you can assign yourself tasks here. These can either be specific to a project or just general tasks that you need to get done within Dubsado. And it'll give you all of this financial information, which is really awesome. So, and then you would go to your projects from here. From the projects, we can get done all of the stuff that's in your workflow. So on my end, the workflow for me looks like an inquiry, and then um, I, they can either go one of two ways with that. They can either fill out their own, um, you know, their own proposal, or I can set up a meeting with them, and then they can do the creative consultation with me and then I will send them the proposal. So, you know, we can either schedule something from here when they come in or they can do it themselves. So one of two ways have split off here. And um, like I said before, uh, I love using this as a work in progress. It's really kind of cool to experiment with what your customers will take to as far as going through a workflow and, uh, you're able to do that in here really easily. This is all customizable. You can, um, you can, let's see, customize this here. So, you know, you could change this to something else. You could edit it to say, weed. You could change the funnels that come in, appointment scheduled, so you could add, a status here. So let's say this is um, this proposal in progress. Um, and that could either be applied to a lead or a job, depending on how you want your workflow to go. So, and then it'll just move on down. Um, you can rearrange these. So I would usually say an incoming lead then goes to 
an appointment scheduled, which then goes to a, pro, a proposal and project progress. Um, and then once they've maybe signed the contract, which could be the next status, Um, and then, you know, if they've signed the contract, maybe your workflow will kick in and assign them into being a job. So all of these things can be moved through and automated. So you saw how I have my incoming leads on my contact form directly get sent the email. Um, and then, you know, from there, they can automatically schedule their appointment. And then, you know, from there, I could have it do quite a few different things. Um, and that's all super customizable again. Uh, and then, you know, down here, you can edit those columns as to what you're seeing on a project. So um, that's here for you to change if you need to. Um, and you can also like add tags and organize your um, events and inquiries by tags. So, um, so this is the project status area um, from your projects here. You can edit these to um, move your clients along in your workflow. This is kind of the status of your projects. So I edited these a little bit to show, you know, you could have all of them. Um, you know, that may be quite a few if you have a lot of incoming leads. Um, so for me, this is where uh, they would come in from my website. They could either schedule an appointment or they could possibly jump from being a lead to filling out their own proposal. Um, this step, if they scheduled their appointment, we're going to do their creative consultation and then I will make their proposal. Um, sometimes I get people who just kind of know exactly what they need as far as numbers of things so they can fill that out and um, from there I can set their appointment and contact them to go over what they need as far as colors and creativity. Um, from there, you know, you can go into having a contract signed. Usually um, the contract gets signed and then on the next page directly after they sign the contract is the first invoice. So here you can also create a new project or export. So creating a new project, you would enter the title, create a new client or an existing client. You can have multiple projects per client. That's also um, an option. If you have somebody that you work for frequently, you can always do that. You know, you can select their status. You can automatically drop them wherever you want to within the process, but, um, you know, you may have to fix some automations if, if you have things going on. Let me show you the automations. It's really kind of fun. So under workflow. So under workflow, you can, you can set these up to do quite a few different things. And it's all based on, you know, what happens right after this previously, like you can edit this to do a whole lot of different things. Um, so here, send email, inquiry response general. You can edit that. Um, you can fix it to specific days after all actions are complete. Um, before, you can do so many different things. Um, that's why it's so interesting to play around with this and see what works best for you. Uh, and then you can, you know, once this is all templated out, they can, it will start going and you can pause or start these anytime you want to within a project. So if they like, say this sample job was moving through a workflow, you could pause it. There would be a button here and you can set up these workflows to, if I didn't want this to automatically happen, you could um, require approval. So it will stop this workflow until you've approved it to move forward, which is kind of nice if you need to stop and check in on something um, or if you need to add some information to uh, the emails that are going out. Yeah, you can definitely um, see what things are paused really quickly in your projects. It would show up 
right here as to where they are in their workflow that you've assigned incoming leads. So definitely something you can play around with. It's really cool. It's a great feature. I highly, highly recommend it. I very much appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about Dubsado. Hopefully this helped you. Hopefully you can use some of these ideas and take them with you to give Dubsado a shot.